Amen. Well, praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you here today on What the World yes. Needs is Jesus on WOLW. We appreciate you for tuning in with us today and listening to What the World Needs is Jesus because what the world truly needs, Brother Larry, is Jesus. Amen. We want to say that we appreciate you. Appreciate all these that's with us today. Appreciate Brother Larry and Brother Ricky. They've come yeah. around. Uh, we're ready to just tell you about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I just tell you about somebody that's going to have. want to say today that we appreciate. Uh, uh, we appreciate WOLW, amen, yeah, for, yeah. For, for, for making this opportunity that we can, Brother Steve Black and, and uh, Brother Matthew, that, that make this opportunity that we can tell you, we can tell a lost and dying world yeah. about somebody that can Glory help them, amen. God. You yeah. see, we've got a lot of problems and a lot of troubles in this world. Hey, there's a lot of things going on, but there's one thing about it. If we just turn it all over to Jesus... <laughs> Turn it all over to the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, yeah. and he'll help us. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm glad today to be a born-again child of the living God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe I could preach right now. Bless God. Here we go. Listen to me, friend. Now, if you want to if you want to find us on the web, you can find us on Facebook, Facebook.com, What the World Needs is Jesus. Also on YouTube, uh, go to W O L W. Go to, uh, on, on the YouTube, go to OLW's video playlist and look up what the world needs is Jesus. Twitter, you go to twitter.com, World with Jesus. Folks, if you want to email us, you can email us at worldwithjesus at gmail.com. Friend, I don't know about you, but I want to go to heaven. Amen. I don't want to go to that awful place that's called hell, but I want to go to a place, amen, that's called heaven. Jesus oh, said, I've gone to prepare a place for you, and if I go away, I will come again and receive you yes. unto myself. Praise be unto the Lamb of God. It's going to take Jesus, folks, if we're going to make it to heaven. Yes. I want you to worship with Brother Ricky now as he comes around and gives us the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Hey, man, thank you, Brother Ronnie. And just like to say it, I love the Lord again this morning. It's, it's a nonstop thing, amen. You don't love him one day and not the next. You love him every day, glory to God. You, you don't live right on Sunday morning and then live like whatever through the week. You live right all the time, amen. Glory to God. I love him this morning. I know who's holding my hand. That's who's holding my life, glory to God. And I love him, and I thank him, and I appreciate him for everything he does. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today, glory to God, this is a service just for you, amen. This is just for you, amen. If you don't know him, you can know him. Just get on your knees and ask him in your heart, glory to God. That's as simple as it gets. It's not hard. It's not, you have to do this or that or the other. All you have to do is talk to Jesus. All you have to do is ask him in your heart. You can't get to heaven without him. The Bible says the Bible says, Jesus Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. Amen. That tells us right there, glory to God, that we've got to have Jesus to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. I want to read a few scriptures here. In John chapter 2, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Amen. They're, they're going to a marriage ceremony. Amen. And when they... When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour has not yet come. His mother saith unto him, Servants, the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Amen. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the pouring of the Jews, containing two or three firkins, a piece. Yeah, come on. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots yeah. with water. Come Amen. On. And they filled them up to the brim. And, and he saith unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. Amen. Mm. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, that was made wine. Uh -oh. yes. Amen. Uh -oh. He knew not whence it was, yeah. but the servants which drew the water knew. Amen. Jesus turned the water into wine. Amen. This is one of the first miracles that Jesus done. Amen. Now, I can't turn the water into wine. Amen. I, I can't calm a raging sea. 
I can't raise a man from the dead, but I know a man who can, glory to God. And glory to God, his name is Jesus. Amen. We got to know Jesus. I can't walk on water. I can't heal the blind. I can't make the lame to walk. Amen. And I can't, I can't make the dumb to talk, but I know a man who can, glory to God. I know a man who can, and his name is Jesus. Amen. And he lives... He's alive right here in my heart. He lives every day right here with me. Amen. In my heart. Amen. If, if you're not saved today, I can't save you. Brother Larry can't save you. you, you your your uh, pastor can't save you. Brother Ronnie can't save you. But I know a man that can do that too. Amen. Glory to God. And his name is Jesus Christ. Glory. His name is Jesus. Amen. He we. He can't save you from he can save you from a burning hell and give you life everlasting, amen. For anyone who will ask, that's anyone, anybody that asks, he can save you, amen. If if we know if we know the way, and I believe it's our duty to tell if if we know the way, I believe it's our duty to tell you the way, amen. That's why I'm standing up here talking to you, amen, because I know the way, the way is Jesus Christ, and I want to tell you that way, amen. The Bible says in Ezekiel 33 and verse 8, it says, it says, when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou doest not speak to warn the wicked man from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require of thine hand. Amen. Now this is, God had made Ezekiel a, a watchman for Israel. Amen. And he says, but nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn it, to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. Amen. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Amen. In other words, in other words, if we tell him, we're all good because we've done what we're supposed to do. Amen. I want to tell you, I want to tell the whole world. I just want to tell everybody. Amen. I want to tell the whole world that Jesus lives today. He heals and he saves. Glory to God. He, he's on top of everything. Amen. He'll put peace, love, joy. Amen. He'll, he'll put it in your heart and he'll protect you from the, from the wickedness of the devil. Amen. Which we all are. Which the devil comes against all of us, and I know he does, glory to God. And, but Jesus will protect us from him, amen. If your life's a wreck and you have problems on this corner and that corner, call upon Jesus, glory to God. Let Jesus set you free, amen. Let Jesus set you free. Amen. The children of Israel was in bondage. They were slaves for 400 years, and God set them free, amen. He just set them free, glory to God. Paul and Silas was beaten, thrown in prison. Amen. Their feet was in shackles. But at the midnight hour, amen, at the midnight hour, when things look bad, glory to God, things are getting bad for Paul and Silas. When the situation looked bad, glory to God, have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Have you ever been at that midnight hour when you think things can't get no worse? Amen. What do you do? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? How are you going to fix your problem? Glory to God, things look so bad, there's no hope. Have you ever been there? The Bible says at the midnight hour, Paul and Silas prayed. Amen. That's the first thing they done. That's the first thing we all need to do, glory to God, is pray and seek God. Amen. Pray, glory to God. And that's the first thing we got to do is pray. And we should do this when we in our problems and trials. Amen. Fall on our face before God and just pray, amen. And then they started singing praises, amen. They started singing praises to God. Now, I, now I want us to get this picture right here. Paul and Silas had been beaten, put in shackles, amen. They had shackles on their feet. They was in jail. They was in jail, and at the midnight hour, glory to God, at midnight, they were praying and singing praises unto God, amen. Ain't that something? They was praying in jail, Shackles on their feet, they've been beaten. And back then when you got beat, you got beat, amen. They beat you good. And they was singing and praying and singing praises unto God, amen. You know what we would be doing? We'd be in there complaining and griping. And where are you, God? Why am I in here? Why am I in jail? Why am I in this position? Yeah, that's right, amen. Glory to God. But the Bible says suddenly, 
Any time suddenly comes up, you better hang on. Something fixing to happen, amen. Something big going to happen, glory to God. The Bible says suddenly there was a great earthquake, amen. The doors of the prison flew open, glory to God, and the bands were loosed off their legs, amen. Glory to God. I know a man that can come at the midnight hour. Glory to God, amen. The doors flew open, the bands come off. The jailer said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Amen, they was in jail. All this bad stuff was happening to them. They, things looked bad, and they started praying and seeking God and singing praises. Amen, and not only did they get out of jail, but a man got saved just by all that going on. Amen. That man said, what must I do to be saved? Glory to God. Amen. When you're at your midnight hour with your situation, other people might be watching you too. Amen. They might be watching, see just to see how you handle that situation, amen? They might be watching for that. Are you going to stand around feeling sorry for yourself, amen? Are, are, you, going to, are you going to start praying and singing praises to God, amen? That's what we need to do, amen? When you got Jesus in your heart, everything's going bad. We, th 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 this is the kind of people we are. When you got Jesus in your heart and everything's going bad, you're still happy, amen? Yep. Even though things are going bad and things are rough, you're still praising God and being happy, amen? Yes, Glory to God. That, that's what kind of people we are, amen? amen? I know a man that can, amen? Yes, and his amen. name above all yes. is Jesus Christ. Glory yes. to God. I love it, amen? I love him today, amen? Yes. Mark 4, verse 36 says, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took even as he they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, as that it was as it was full. Now, Amen. We're we're rolling along in life, everything's going good, Amen. We look up. Here comes a storm, glory to God. Here it comes. You better hang on. Troubles, trials, problems of this life, they start to beat on our ship, amen. They start to beat on our ship, and they just keep coming and keep coming and keep coming until we're just overwhelmed. We're just overwhelmed with these problems, amen, with this storm. We're overwhelmed with the storm that's come, amen. I can't fix your problems. I can't fix Brother Ronnie's problems. I can't fix my own problems sometimes. Amen. Amen. Now, I, nobody can fix your problems, but I know a man that can, glory to God. Amen. And his name is Jesus Christ, glory to God. You got to have Jesus, and he'll fix your problems. Amen. He's the answer for every, everything you have. Amen. Jesus is the answer. Now, Jesus was asleep in the hinder part of the ship, and the, the, the disciples are out here in this great storm of wind. They're worried and scared. The winds are blowing. They don't know what's going to happen, but they know who to call on. Amen. They know who to call on, glory to God. They know the man that can. Amen. The man that can calm the sea. Amen. And his name is Jesus. I want to get that across to us. The man that can, his name is Jesus. Amen. The disciples went and got Jesus, and he arose and rebuked the wind. And he said unto the sea, Peace, be still, and the wind ceased. Amen. Ain't that great? Ain't that something? Glory to God. And there was a great calm. Amen. Jesus just said, Peace, be still. Amen. If, if you know who to call on, amen, he can calm your raging sea. No matter what your problem is, Jesus is the answer. Amen. Matthew 8 and 5, there was a certain centurion man came unto Jesus saying, I have a servant that lay at home sick of the palsy. Amen. Yeah, uh -oh. Uh -oh. And he's grievously tormented. Yeah. Amen. Sick with this palsy. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the man answered him and said, Lord, I'm not even worthy that you could come under my roof. Amen. I'm not even that worthy that you could even come in my house. But just speak the word, glory to God. Just speak the word only. That's all you have to do. This man already knew Jesus. He said, just speak the word only, and I already know what will happen. Amen. Now, when Jesus entered into Capernaum, the centurion man, he knows who to get. Amen. He knows who to hunt up because he knows who can get the job done. Amen. And that's Jesus Christ. 
He tells Jesus, he says, you don't even have to come to my house. I'm not worthy for you to come to my house, amen. He said, he said if you'll just speak the word, my servant shall be healed, amen. That's the kind of faith we all need, amen. Yeah. That's who we all need to know, that Jesus right there, glory to God. If, we, if he would just speak the word, we know that he would be, he would be saved, amen. The centurion couldn't heal this servant, but he knew the man that could, and he knew who to get a hold of, glory yes, to God. He knew who to call on, amen. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done, amen, unto thee. And his servant was healed that same hour, amen. Yes. That, 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 that centurion man had, had a lot of faith, amen, because... Yes. He knew Jesus could just speak the word and it would be done. Amen. He knew, he knew who to find. He knew who to get a hold of. And his name is Jesus. And I hope we all get this because his name is Jesus. Amen. That's who we all need to get a hold of. When our problems come, when our trials come, first thing we need to do is pray and get a hold of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. If, if you don't know who to get a hold of, when you're sick, when you're at your midnight hours come, amen, when your storm's raging at your house, do you know who to get a hold of? Amen. You got to get a hold of Jesus, glory to God. And I hope you've got that in your spirit today. I love the Lord today and just worship with Paul a new creation as they sing us a song. There's a blessed morning coming in the Bible we have read When all of God's living saints will meet the risen dead We'll all be called up together, rise to meet Him in the clouds And on that glorious morning we'll lay heavy burdens down Oh, I'm looking for the blessed morning when I lay heavy burdens down with a mighty host of angels in heaven we'll march all around We'll sing God's praise to the endless days Not a tear will ever be found I'm looking for the blessed morning When I lay these heavy burdens down We're tempted and tried as we live here With trouble down life's way With so much pain and time for the day when a blessed redeemer will appear in a cloud with a shout he'll say come up higher lay your heavy burdens down oh i'm looking for the blessed morning when i lay these heavy burdens down there with a mighty host of angels in heaven we'll march all around we'll sing god's praise to the end of days not a tear will ever be found for the blessed morning when I lay these heavy burdens down. Oh, I'm looking for the blessed morning when I lay these heavy burdens down. There with a mighty host of angels in heaven we'll march all around. We'll sing God's praise to the end of the stage. Not a tear will ever be found. I'm looking for the blessed morning when I lay these heavy burdens down. Woo, glory. Praise the Lord God most high. Yes, I'm man. telling you what that Paul a new creation. Uh, son, that's just some fine worship. I'm gonna tell you what. Y'all need to be listening to that. You ought to be a praising and worshiping God. You ought to be on fire by now. Come on now. I'm gonna tell you what, son, you ought to be hotter than a depot stove. Yeah. I'll just tell you. Brother Ricky, that's a fine word. Yes, it is. Uh, Y'all, I want, I want to touch on that just a minute. You know, he said, when he talked about he was in the ship, and Jesus come up there, and he was there, he said, peace be still. You understand, you ever been around where you think, well, I'm all by myself. Yeah. I, I'm lonely, and, and my family's here, and my friends are here, and I'm in the, I'm in the mall, or I'm at the, the grocery store, or department store, and there's people everywhere, but I'm lonely. Yeah. God, where are you? Yeah. God, where, what are you doing? I hadn't heard from you. I hadn't seen anything happen. I come here to tell you today that God is ever present help in the time of trouble. Yes, he is. 
The word declares it. Look here. Go to Psalms chapter 46 verse 1. Bible says God's our refuge and our strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Do you understand? He's a well proved. Go back in the days of when Moses was there, when they was delivered out of Egypt. Who do you think delivered them out? The presence of the Most High God was there. Yeah. When he split the Red Sea, Jehovah God was there. Do you understand? When water come out of the rock, Jehovah God was there. His presence was there. I come to tell you, he's an ever-present yes, help amen. in the time of trouble. Yes. Just Lord because God. you look around and you don't see God, and you don't you on, remember, Lord. we don't have to feel his presence, okay? Let, let me just tell you, we don't have to feel the presence of God to know that God's there. That's right. He's with us all the time. He yes, said, he I'll is. never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Matthew 28. Anybody. Don't take my word for it. Listen yeah, here. Yeah. Don't you ever take my word for it. You get, to, you get your Bible and you look these scriptures up. Anybody. Look here. We got time. Look here. Matthew 28. Let's just read. Uh, start in 18. This is Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Now it's page 1280 in my Bible. <laughs> my pastor used to say it all the time. I love when he'd do that. And Now this is Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's everywhere in case you don't know that. When he said heaven, he means everything out there. He's talking about everything, not of earth. All heaven, power has been given to Jesus. And then he says right after that, and in earth. Remember I told you a while back, we're made from earth. So if he, all power is given him in heaven, in earth, and in you. You understand? Verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Woo! I love to say that. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Now verse 20, here's where I'm headed. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, look out, here it is. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Do you understand what he just said? I'm with you always, even until the end of the world, to the end of the earth, to the end of the age. I'm yeah, with you. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I've come down here. I sent the Holy Ghost after I left here to come down and be your guide and be your conscience, yeah, be your deliverer. He said, I'm your teacher. I will uphold my righteous right hand. Do you understand? Jesus is the one he's with you, never will leave you. Amen. Now, like I said, sometimes you look around and you go, well, Lord, I don't feel you. I, I don't see you. I, I need some touch. I need some comfort. You ever heard of a fellow named, y'all Y'all heard of Elijah and Elisha, hadn't you? Well, well let's, let's go over here and talk to Elisha for just a minute. You want to? Let's go to 2 Kings um, chapter 6. Now, Elisha, you know, he followed Elijah around. Y'all remember. Wherever he went, before, G, before Elijah was taken up in that whirlwind, that fire chariot, Wherever he went, Elisha went. You understand? He wasn't going to let him go. He went several places, and Elijah said, Now, Elisha, I want you to hang out right here. i got to go over here and do something for God. You know what Elisha said? As the Lord liveth, I ain't letting you go. Uh -huh. Now, there's a message in that all by itself. Yeah. We ought to be telling the Lord, Jesus, as you live, I ain't letting you go. Come on. You know, y'all seen in the stores, I remember, don't see it much now, but when I was a kid, you used to see it. Little kids hold the mama's coattail so they wouldn't get lost. You hold on to me, baby. Come on. You follow me. Jesus, as you live, I ain't letting go of you. You understand? I got a hold to the hem of that garment, yep. and I ain't letting go. Amen. I'm telling you, <clears throat> Jesus is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. Yes, That's what the Word says. All I can do is tell you what the Word says, <laughs> and I'm going to give you a little bit more. Listen to this. We're in uh, 2 Kings Chapter 6, start down here about verse 8. Now, having a little problem, you see the king of Syria, Then let me just read, you, you know the story. This is uh, chapter 6, 
Verse 8, then the then, uh, uh, second kings. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel. There was a battle going on. And took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Told his servants, We're going to get over and hang out. Now, this is where we're going to be. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel. That's Elisha. Now, Elisha is telling the king of Israel, Beware that you don't go down there. Be not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the, verse 10, And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once or twice. What he's telling us there, Elisha saved Israel long more than once, multitude of times. Elisha, listen, you want to know how he did it? Listen to this. Now, let me tell you about the presence of God. Yeah. Verse 11, Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore, Trouble for this thing. The king of Syria was mad. He, <laughs> the old boy, was not happy. Let me tell you why. He called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Because every time the king of Syria tried to fight Israel, Israel snuck around, got behind him, got out of the way. He won't know how in the world they knew where we were and what we were doing. Yeah. Do you understand? Uh, God will go in the enemy's camp and reveal to you what's going on. Do you understand yeah. what I'm telling you today? God will tell you where to go and where not to go. Yes, he will. Listen, just because you've got the Spirit of the Lord and you can't just get up and go where you want to go and you get ready, you better listen to God. Amen. If God tells you to go, go. If he tells you don't, don't go. Be sensitive to the Spirit in these last days. Yes. Therefore the heart of the king Syria was sore, verse 11, trouble for this thing. He called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He's asking a question. One of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha. Boy, look at here. Now, I'm trying to teach you. I'm, I'm trying to contain myself. I'm, I've got to teach you. None, my lord, but Elisha. That, that prophet, the prophet that is in Israel, he tells the king of Israel the words, listen to this, that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Do you understand? Elisha don't know where that man is. He, I mean, he knows where he is, but he's not in his bedchamber. What he's telling us is God is right there in the midst of the enemy. He's telling Elisha, hey, Elisha, go tell the king of Israel, go here, go there, and wait till you hear from me. Do you understand? My God is a very present help in the time of trouble. I've come here to tell you today, Jesus will direct your path. Yes. If you'll walk with the Lord, listen to the Lord, my sheep know my voice. Oh, yeah. Do you understand? In John, I got it wrote down here. What did I write? No, we ain't going to turn to John 10, chapter, John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. And you know what it says? And they follow me. Yes. Do you understand? If you know the shepherd and you know his voice, when you hear his voice, you'll go to it. If you're lost in the woods and you don't know, and you begin to hear a whistle or a horn, or you'll go to it. You'll go, I'm lost. I'm headed in that direction because I've got to get out of where I am. Jesus will lift you up out of where you are. Yes, I'm telling you, the Bible says he is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Call on the name oh, yeah. of Jesus. Oh, yes, what the world needs is Jesus. Yes. It, it's just that plain and simple. We must have our Savior, Brother Ricky. Yeah. We've got to have that blood, that love, that fellowship. Do you understand what Jesus... Let me just tell you. You know what he wants? Let me tell you what Jesus really wants. He wants our fellowship. He don't want, I mean, yeah, we're supposed to tithe and all that. He don't want your money. He don't want your coat or your house. He don't want your cattle. He, he wants you. He wants fellowship with you. He's a friend, sticks closer than a brother. All he wants to do is fellowship yes. with you. But in order for you to fellowship with him, you've got to accept him as Savior. He's already died. He's, it's a done deal. All we've got to do is open up our heart and open up our mouth and say, Lord, Come into my life, be yes. my Savior. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. I'll live for you forever and ever. If you say it, I'll do it. If you tell me where to go, I'll go there. Yes. You understand? You tell me to build it, I'll build it. You tell me to tear it down, I'll tear it down. Be sensitive to the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, the Lord God Most High, Jesus, is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Yes. Amen. He is here for you. He'll never leave. We just read that. Now, guys, listen. We either got to believe the word or not. We've got to make up our mind. God's drawn a line in the sand. Sister Hall, he's drawn a line in the sand. Yes. 
I, th I told you this before. I must tell you again. You're either going to stand up and say Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and that's the only way to get to heaven or you're going to stand up and say he's not Lord and Savior and there's many ways to get to heaven. Which one choose you whom this day you serve? As for me and my house, we serve God. I'll tell you right now, we serve Jesus. I ain't ashamed of the gospel. Come on, Lord. Don't you be ashamed of the gospel. Rise up in these last days and begin to preach the word. Tell people about the Lord God most high. Call him into the kingdom, bless yeah, God. Lord of God. Listen at this. Now, listen, i got to get this done. <laughs> this is so good. And Now, this king um, of Syria, verse 13, we're in chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 13, and he said, Go and spy where he is, talking about Elisha, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he's in Dothan. Therefore... Sent he thither horses, chariots, and a great host. He sent a lot of men to get one man. Do you understand? That's how mad King Syria was. Mm -hmm. They came by night and compassed the city about, wrapped up the whole city. Now, verse 15. Here's where I'm headed, these next couple of verses. And when the servant of the man of God, now this is Elisha's servant, okay? When the servant of the man of God was risen early, gone forth, behold, and host. And host compassed the city both with horses and chariots, and his servants said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What was the first thing that happened to the servant of Elisha? Fear fell on him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do you understand? Don't you let fear fall on you. Amen. You let the Holy Ghost fall on you, and you rise up and you speak the word and say, I will not fear. Fear not, only believe. Yes. I will only believe the word of God. Yes. Lord, I shall God. not fear. I shall not doubt. Jesus told me it's in the word. I believe it. End of story. Yeah. Next question. Do you understand? We must not fear. Wipe it out. Get in the word. It's that word of God that erases that fear. It's that word of God that erases that doubt. My God said he'd do it. Bless God he'll do it. What we need to do is get out of his way. Glory. I'm trying to get there. Y'all hold on. Verse 16 <laughs> Boy, I'm and he and now this is Elisha talking to his servant, and the answer what I just got through telling you: Fear not, for they that be with us, boy, are more than they that be with them. Yeah. Did you hear what the man just said? He said the people that's on our side are more than the people that's on our side. Listen to me. Look at here. And Elisha prayed. Did you hear what he said? What did brother Ricky just tells me to go. He said, pray. Yeah. What did Elisha do? Before anything could happen, Elisha had to pray. Yeah. It just says it in verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses, chariots of fire round yeah. about Elisha. I'm Lord. telling you, there are chariots full of fire around you right now. Yes, yeah. amen. Do you understand? Jesus himself is around you. There's angels around you. The Holy Ghost is around you. The blood of Jesus is around you. All the power of heaven and earth is around you. Yeah, Fear not, only believe. Rise up and get in the word. Devil, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Yeah. You speak the word and go forth in boldness. Hebrews said you can come boldly to the throne. Yeah. They couldn't do that. The, Egyptian, uh, the uh, Hebrew children, they could not walk up to the throne of God. They'd get burned up. Yep. When they was at Mount Sinai, before God told them how to do it, where they could come up there and be in his presence, you better not walk up to that mountain. As a cow touched it, poof. Dad, you, uh-uh. No, no, no. But today, yep. because of the blood of Jesus, oh, do you understand? Yeah. I can, you can walk right up to the very throne room of where yeah. the Most High God is. Do you understand? I can get in the presence of God. Glory. Now listen to me. Time's about up. I told you earlier, John 10, 27, My sheep know my voice. My, uh, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. If you died today, what side of God would you be on? You know, there's a left side and a right side of Jesus. If you died today, the Bible talks about in, uh, well, going right quick, Matthew chapter 25. I got just a minute. Matthew 25, verse 31. Let me go ahead and read. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the, now this is the judgment, 
when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another. Listen to this. As a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Now you think God ain't present still and he's watching and knowing what's going on and he's recording? Then shall, that, oh, hold on, let me get down here. Then shall the king say unto them, On this right hand come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Oh, he's talking to the people on his right hand. Yes. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. Thirsty, you gave me drink. A stranger, you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Do you understand that? I'm, listen, let me get down here, verse 41. Time's about up. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. My time is about up. I've got to ask you, what side of Jesus are you on? Yes, are you yes. a goat or are you a sheep? Come on, man. Do you understand that? That's what the Bible wants to know. Yes. Are you a goat or are you a sheep? Yes. Think about this. Your life hangs in the balance. Thank y'all. Praise the Lord God most high. Y'all get ready to wor worship with Shante. And I've told you before, but I've got to tell you again. Praise and worship the Lord God most high like ain't nobody around. Yeah. Worship God. Jesus. That's your answer. I don't know what to do. Worship Jesus. Now you know what to do. I love y'all. See you in a week. Praise. Well, he picked up dust, and he threw it full, and he made a man that can walk, and an eagle that can fly, he said, bring forth the light, he said, let it be, he made a sorry, sorry night, he made the raging sea. One day when I was walking all alone, he laid his hand on me. He laid his hand on me. He wrote the song that the songbirds sang, and he made the earth spin around the sun. Ain't that the coolest thing? And he created a fish that could swim upstream. Made some little tiny wings for the big old bumblebee. And one day when I was walking all alone, he laid his hand on me. Yeah, he laid his hand on me. Words cannot tell it, cause it's better felt than told. The change he made in my life when he reached down. If you hear the message from the man himself, you won't have to hear it from anybody else. He gave me a light. He said to let the thing shine. He gave me a bell. He said to ring a song. He said to sing it, and it's with me all the time. He gave me a hope that would see me through. All the troubles that I have down here And anything that makes me move One day when I was walking all alone He laid his hand on me Yeah, he laid his hand on me Words cannot tell it Cause it's better felt than told The change he made in my life When he reached out to my soul and if you hear the message from the man himself you won't have to hear it from anybody else he gave me a lot he said to let the thing shine he gave me a bell he said to ring it a song he said to sing it and it's with me all the time he gave me a hope that would see me through 
all the troubles that I have down here and anything that makes me move one day when I was walking all alone ladies hand on me yeah you ladies hand on me ladies hand on me yeah you ladies hand on me Hey, man, thank you, Sister Shade, for that song. And I appreciate Brother Larry and, oh, yeah. and appreciate Brother Ricky. And uh, I just appreciate everybody that, that helps us out in this, uh, in this broadcast. And I appreciate you for coming and listening to us and, and watching us. And, and I, I hope that something could be said or done that could make you realize that if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, that you need to know Jesus. Now, if you got your Bibles, and I know you do, Go ahead and turn to Acts chapter 7. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 7. I don't know. I just can't get off the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I tell you what, it is good. Amen. It is good to have the Holy Ghost. It's good to have Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know. Friend, if you don't know Jesus, yeah, you just don't know what you're missing. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I tell you what, if you, you got your Bibles, turn to Acts chapter 7, and I want to start reading in verse 54. Acts chapter 7, and I want to start reading in verse 54. The Bible says, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Yeah. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their, stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. The witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now I want to give you just a little bit a background here on Stephen. You see, the Bible says over there in, ver in chapter 6 that whenever the Bible says that as those days when the was numbered of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews about the widows that were being neglected on the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. In other words, it's not reason that we should leave the word of God that we need to go take care of all that. You see, the back... It, Back in that day, the church was growing. So could you imagine the going and preaching one message and 3,000 souls getting saved? All of a sudden, you ain't got nobody, and all of a sudden, you got a whole congregation of 3,000 people. Amen. Glory to God. Can you imagine that? I can't. I just can't imagine that uh, growing that quick, that fast. I mean, overnight, overnight you got three. And anyway, the, the disciples said it's not reason for us that we should leave the Word of God. We need to study the Word. We need to stay in the Word. We need to begin to preach so that we can begin to preach God's Word. So what we need to do is we need to seek us out. The Bible said that he said to, they said to seek you out among you seven men full of the Holy Ghost. It said, and then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report. Now listen to me. I don't know if we got a lot of the, I, I, I want you to listen to this, what he said, what, what, what they're supposed to be looking for in people. I believe that what we need to be looking for in men today, I believe that what we need to be looking for in our, in, in, in our churches today, in our leaders in our churches today, is we need to be looking for men like this. He said, seek ye out seven men of honest report. 
full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom you may appoint over the, the business of this, of this business. But we will give ourselves con continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Yeah. So what, he, the, what, he was, what they were saying was seek ye out men full of the Holy Ghost yeah. of a good honest report. Yeah. Amen. Somebody that's been there. Somebody that lives right. Somebody yeah. that does right. Somebody yeah. that walks right. Somebody yeah. that walks up like Jesus yeah. walks right like that, my friend, we need to seek out some men. And I believe we need some men today, amen, that'll be of an honest report, that'll be up full of wisdom, that'll be full of the Holy Ghost of God. Get ourselves, amen, right with God where we can serve the people. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to the Lamb. Now, now, Stephen was one of those men. I, don't, I think it mentions Stephen first. It says, and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient unto the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then arose a certain synagogue that were called the synagogue of the Lepidarians and the Syrians, and then they arose disputing with Stephen. In other words, they didn't agree with what he was teaching, didn't agree with what he was preaching, my friend, and they began to come against him. And so Stephen began to preach to them, and Stephen began to tell them, you're just like your forefathers. Yeah. I mean, Stephen began to tell them all throughout the whole life, all throughout the whole time of time, whenever Moses was there, whenever Moses let them out. You see, God always has him a prophet. I mean, God always in the old Bible, Brother Larry, he always had him a prophet. He always had somebody that would lead his people. Yeah, man. Glory to God. I believe we need somebody today that will lead our people. I believe we need somebody today that's full of the Holy Ghost, that's full of wisdom, that's full of power of God, my friend, that we can, that he can lead God's people, that we can lead them out of this old land one of these days. Amen? Yes. Glory to the Lamb of God. You see, Stephen... And the verse, <clears throat> the verse that I want us to <clears throat> focus on here is verse 56 where he said, And he said, Behold, I see heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Yeah. Yeah. Glory. He said, I see. Now this is a man that's being stoned. Amen. And I don't, now, now I'm not talking about they picked up little pebbles and they throwed at him. I'm talking about stones. I'm talking about rocks. I mean, I'm talking about stones that stoned him till they killed him. Yeah. Amen. And, it, and Stephen looked up while he was being stoned and he could see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Now, I don't know what that does for you, but I believe that in my problems and in my troubles and in the things that I'm going through, I believe that if I could look up and I could see the heavens open up and I could see the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of the Father, I believe that there wouldn't be anything, amen, that I could believe God for. Amen, I believe that if I could see Jesus and I believe that if we could just get our minds upon the Lord Jesus Christ, that if we could just begin to look up in our problems, look up in our troubles, look up in whatever we may be going through today, I believe that we could see the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of the Father, amen, and we know that our problems will be okay. Yes, amen. amen, it's going to be all right. Amen, it's going to be all right, whatever you're going through, whatever problem you may be having, whatever the situation is, my friend, it's going to be okay because I believe that if we could just look up and see Jesus. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Just look up and see the Lord Jesus Christ in your infirmities. Just look up and see the Lord Jesus Christ in that sickness. Look up and see the Lord Jesus Christ in that problem. Look up and see the Lord Jesus Christ and call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and let Jesus Jesus on the inside. Yeah, man. Now listen. It said, and they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears. Didn't want you see, here's what he told them. He said, You a bunch of stiff necks. Come on now. I didn't say that. 
Stephen said it. You don't believe me? Go to chapter 7 and look in verse 31, uh, look in verse 51. Said, yeah, he said, you stiff neck, uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do you. In other words, you ain't going to do right. You're not, you don't plan on doing right. You're going to do it like you want to do it. But you've always, even your fathers resisted the Holy Ghost. Even your fathers resisted God. But God's going to send his man. God's going to send somebody to those that's going to listen, to those that's going to obey the Lord Jesus Christ to lead his people out. Hallelujah. Stephen said, Stephen said, you're a bunch of, you're, you're a bunch of stiff necks. Amen. I know some of them today. Amen. You see, uncircumcised back in the back then, back in that day meant uncircumcised person back in the old Bible meant ungodly. It would, but if they weren't circumcised, the uncircumcised meant they were ungodly. When Jesus came, that that all that. That it's all a different thing. Now we're under grace now. Uh -huh. But back in the old Bible, that's why he told him, he said, you're a bunch of stiff-necked, uncircumcised. Because in other words, what, you know, whenever David went over and, and, and told, the, told Goliath, he said, he said, you, you, he said you're uncircumcised. I mean, in other words, you, you have the devil. In other words, I mean, you're unholy. I mean, you're not, you're not holy. You're, un you're unholy. You're uncircumcised. I mean, he said, you're a bunch of uncircumcised. Uh, in heart and in ears and you do always resist the Holy Ghost friend let me tell you something don't resist the Holy Ghost hallelujah got to have him amen we got to have Jesus said he being full of the Holy Ghost look up steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father now I want to now, now Brother Larry touched on this just a little bit, and and I want, he touched on the on it just just a little bit above a little bit above where I want to go. Now I want you to I want you to go if you want to go to Second Kings chapter seven where Brother Larry was at. I want you to go over and, and I want to explain something. First of all, Elisha, Brother Larry told us about how Elisha wanted to follow Elijah around, and he did. He thought, uh, Elijah said, I'm going to go over here and you stay here. And Elijah said, no, I'm going. Yeah, yeah I'm not staying here. He, he decided, he said, okay, come on. So he goes to another city. He said, Elijah, he said, I'm going over here to this city. You stay here. He said, no, I'm going. Elisha wasn't going to let Elijah go. And let me tell you why he wasn't going to let him go. Because when they got over there, amen, and it was about time for Elijah to go, he looked at Elisha and he said, Elisha, he said, I'm going to give you one request. He said, what would you like? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. I like this part. He said, what would you like? Elisha said, I just want a double portion. Oh, hallelujah. I just want a double portion. I just want a double portion of what you got, Elijah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Just give me a double portion of the Holy Ghost of God. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. Sometimes I think he does. Amen. Elisha said, I just want a double portion. That's all I want. You didn't give me a double portion of what you got, Elisha. Can you imagine? And Elisha did it, too. Can you imagine what Elisha could do if he had a double portion of what Elijah had? Uh, yeah. Woo, glory. I don't know about you, but I believe that old Elisha got his eyes opened up. Hey Amen. I believe that when he got that day, and let me, here's what Elijah told him. Elijah said, if you see me go up, yep. amen, he said, now, if you see me go up, he said, I'm going to give you that double portion. But if you don't see me go up, you don't get to see it. You don't, you don't get that double portion. He said, but if you see me go up, I'm going to give you that double portion. Well, Elisha seen him go up. Amen. He seen that chariot of fire. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. Seen that chariot of fire. Come on down, pick Elisha up and take him right on up. Guess what Elisha got? He got that double portion. Sister Hall, I've, I've seen some folks get that double portion, ain't you? I guarantee you one thing, friend. I don't know about you, but I want that double portion. I mean, you can give it. Lord, you can give me that double portion of the Holy Ghost any day you want to. Glory to the Lamb of God. I want it. Glory to God. I want that double portion. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Elisha's over there. 
Brother Larry talked. Brother Larry, he just about got my message, didn't he? Elisha's over there, and he's and he and he and he's trying to tell this young man. Now look, don't you worry about it. God got it covered. Don't you worry about it. Friend, listen to me. Don't you worry about your problems. Don't you worry about your troubles. Don't you worry about your sickness. Don't you worry about what's going on. If you're a child of God, don't you worry about it. God's got you back. God's got what you need. Amen. Elias is telling this young man, don't you worry about it. We got it. Well, that young man gets up and he looks out and he sees all them multitudes of armies and stuff and he sees all of that going on and he says, he looks up at him and he says, what we going to do now? <laughs> Didn't say it just like that. But he says, well, I'll just read it to you that way you know, you know what I'm saying. In verse 15, I think Brother Larry done read it to you. In verse 15, he said, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. Yes. And his servant said unto him, Alias, my master, how shall we do? Uh -oh. Huh? What are we going to do now? Yeah. Hey, look at that. Uh -oh. Look over there. Look at all the chariots. Look at all the horses. Look at all the men. Look at that army over there. What are we going to do now? Yeah. Let me tell you what Elisha done. Elisha prayed. Brother Larry, like he said. Elisha prayed. And he said, Lord, I pray thee, open this young man's eyes. Open his eyes up that he can see. My friend, we need some eyes opened up today. We need our eyes open. Lord, I pray that the scales fall from your eyes. Amen. That your eyes can be opened up. That you can see that you must have Jesus as your personal Savior. That you must have the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior today. Glory to the Lamb of God. Lord, open up his eyes. Hallelujah. Guess what? Guess what? God opened his eyes up. God let him see. God let him see. And whenever, whenever God opened his eyes up, he looked out there and he seen all these chariots of fire. Woo, glory to the... Let me pray. Friend, if you could just open up in spiritual eyes. If you could just, oh, but Brother Ronnie, you don't know what I'm going through. Brother Ronnie, you don't know how bad it is. Brother Ronnie, you don't know how sick I am. Brother Ronnie, you don't know this. You don't know that's going on. You don't know this is going on. I know I don't, but he knows it. And if you could just open up those spiritual eyes, ask the Lord Jesus Christ to let the scales fall from your eyes, and you could see the Lord Jesus. If you could just look up and see Jesus. Just look up just like old Stephen did and see Jesus. I believe. That you'd see. I believe you could see the angels round right about you. I believe you'd be able to see those angels. <coughs> That's there. Ready to help us and ready to go with us. You see, I. Uh, let me tell you this quick little story. Uh, 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 a man, uh, a preacher friend of mine. He used to come over to my house, and he used to we we used to study the Bible and stuff together, and go do things together. And he came over to my house one time, and he said he said when he pulled in the driveway, he said he happened to look over across the street, and he said when he looked, it was dark, brother Larry. He said he looked over across the street over there, and he seen all these angels, all around about our property. He said all them angels was all around about that. Problem. Friend, let me tell you something. If you could just open those spiritual eyes. Yeah. Let me tell you, just get those spiritual eyes opened up and look and see those angels that's hovered around about you, that's yeah. ready, that's sitting right there, ready to help you and touch you. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Just believe that Jesus is Jesus because those angels is there, friend. If we could just, if we could just only just, just do like Stephen did. Yeah. 
in our problems, in our troubles, and in the things that's going on with us, just look up and see Jesus. Just look up and say, Lord, here I am. And I need your help. Show me those angels. Send those angels. Amen. To help me. And to help me in my troubles and in my problems. Friend, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I urge you, somewhere, somehow, you find you an altar, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and let Jesus on the inside. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. And what the world needs is Jesus to lead us through this land. And if we